Hey everybody, Superfluous Jay here with what might end up being the penultimate episode of Factorio for Beginners. That's right, we have, uh, I have two more episodes planned. Um, and if I've missed anything after you see this episode uh, that has nothing to do with the rocket, um, if, if you think I've missed a topic, please reply to this episode saying what you think I missed, because I'm hoping to cover everything I haven't covered up until this point. Except the rocket, which I'm going to do next episode. Um, but what we're going to start on here is uh, the, the things that we've researched recently that I haven't talked about, um, including uh, uranium ammo, uh, artillery, which is one of my more favorite topics. And um, I think that's actually it. Uh, <laughs> I think I've covered everything up until that point. So we're going to be killing some biters this episode. And uh, oh, one, one other thing. I totally forgot power switches. I'm going to be covering that. And uh, I'm going to kind of glance through here and see if there's anything else I missed. But uh, that's that's literally it. Um, before uh, we, we start on that, though, notice I've I've switched over my green circuits uh, instead of the the one of these and then one of the big thing. I've got three of these. So I've got two and maybe a half ish <laughs> red belts of green circuits coming out. And if you uh, let me switch to map mode just because it's easier to pan down. If you go all the way down here, they're still barely enough. Or actually don't, uh, they're not even barely enough. They're not enough. Um, the purple circuits are pulling off the last of my green circuits, which means that my, um, my purple belts actually don't have green circuits coming down to them. Luckily, the only thing that needs green circuits are these, and they're backed up to the point where, uh, they, uh, that they still have the green circuits that we've sent down. And I think occasionally some green circuits sneak their way all the way down here. It's rare, but it happens. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just the green circuit draw at the end is, it, it's real. Um, most of this problem is that we're still making a ton of, uh, of these things, uh, speed modules and product productivity modules, which I really don't need to make. So I think I'm actually going to cut these off, uh, just to, to not use as much, um, not use as many circuits because I'm not going to use these. They're just they're just a sink right now for for this sort of thing. So uh, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to set up uh, my um, artillery factory, and I will be back when uh, ready to talk about artillery. Okay, I figured considering this is one of the the last times we'll be doing this, uh, I would I would bring you in on the construction part of it. Um, Artillery shells take a lot of stuff, including um, uh, explosives, which explosives require sulfur and water and coal. So I've got sulfur here, which requires uh, petroleum and water. So we've got a whole bunch of needs here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm actually just going to run this all the way across here. There's no real reason not to uh, not to just run this line all the way here. And then I'm going to uh, run it off this way. And then this guy's going to just head off and uh, put some put some water in the uh, in the pipes here. So we're going to run these pipes to where they need to be to uh, to not be in the, anybody's way, which of course means running them like this. And then this is where the water is going to go, uh, which means I can actually do that. So that's water. And then petroleum is going to be the next one up. So it's going to come to here. And then we're just going to put these here. And now this is going to be petroleum. And then I can copy this and just go paste, 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 paste. Now we've got petroleum going in here. We've got water going in here. And these guys now have their, uh, their the, those ingredients that they want. Um, now, I just realized that this would be smarter if I did it slightly differently. So I'm going to do it slightly differently. I'm going to put I'm going to put the sulfur here and I'm going to put these here. And then that means that this water line is going to go like this, 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 and then that's it. Because I'm going to run the pipes like this. And then this petroleum line, which can't go all the way to here, so we'll have to just kind of do that to it. It's going to go like that. That way we can directly feed sulfur into these explosive lines because they need sulfur. They also need coal. He's got everything he needs. So we, all we need to do is get coal in here to get these explosives going. Now, we don't actually want explosives, though, if you recall. We want um, artillery shells and artillery shells take explosive cannon shells, 
which is why I need the explosives. They also need explosives themselves. Explosive cannon shells need steel and plastic and the explosives. So what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to bring um, really don't need for anything other than a yellow belt here when it comes down to it, because I'm not going to make a lot of these things. But the coal we can bring in like this, and it needs to come all the way to here to get put into this guy. So this is going to be our coal line. This is going to be our explosive line coming off. And frankly, this can be our explosive line too. We're going to put coal into this guy from here. And here. And this is going to be a little ugly, but you know what? I'm going to just go with it. And the explosives are going to come out here and here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put belts like this. And you'll see why in a second. Uh, but we can cover this whole thing with uh, two power poles. And then we need this guy. So now these guys are ready to go there. He's already making sulfur because he's good. Um, now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring in coal on the bottom of this belt only. And then the explosives are going to get put on the top of the belt. And then once we get off the top here, we're going to have coal on the bottom and explosives on the top. So here's our coal line. We want to split it off right. Actually, yeah, we're going to split it off right here. And these guys need to be undergrounds. And let me think, because I want something special to be done with this. I want it to only be on the one side of the belt. So I'm going to do this. We're going to kind of cheat here. We're going to go like this, say coal can only go on this side. Well, if I actually say filter this by coal. Uh, and then other than uh, the little bit that got through before I set the filter, these guys are good. There we go. So now coal's going to be coming out of here. It's going to be put into here to make explosives. And then he's going to start making explosives. And as soon as he makes them, he's going to put them on this belt, which is going to put them down here. And then we're good to go. So now we're making explosives. Now those explosives go into a just a regular old factory, which probably doesn't even need to be a blue factory. But we're going to make it a blue factory. And this is going to make our explosive cannon shells, which we need steel and plastic for, and then the explosives. And then those are going to go into the artillery shells, which also need radars, which is crazy. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is we are going to, uh, we're going to actually set up more. Actually, I don't know why I'm picking these guys off here. I'm going to do this and this. This guy's going to make explosive cannon shells, which we need for here, which takes explosives, plastic, and steel. This guy's going to make artillery shells, which takes explosives, cannon shells, and a radar. And then we're going to make a radar here, which takes iron, gears, and circuits. Yay. So we got a lot of stuff to bring in here. We've already got the explosives, and the explosives need to go to at least here. And then we'll do power and power. Why not? So these guys got their explosives. Now they need uh, plastic and steel, which we can which we can bring in right here if we wanted to. Uh, don't see any big reason why not, other than this pipe is here, but I think we'll be fine. Plastic's right here, steel's right here. It's a little tight coming through like this. Um, but I think what we can do is we can bring the plastic down here. Yeah, I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it here because there's just, there's, there's room here. Uh, but the plastic is actually a red thing. So we're going to bring it off here. These guys just need to be yellows. This this can be, uh, even though it's coming off a red line, it can be yellow. And it's going to come out here and meet the steel. And then the steel's going to come off here. This is a red line. So I'm going to take an, a red underground. This guy's going to come out here. These guys are going to meet here. And then wiggle their way underneath everything. 
Uh, yeah, he goes to here and then under. And then he can come down like this. Oh, wait. Ah, you know what? That's fine. I changed my mind. We're not going to put it here. We'll put it here. <laughs> this is steel and gears. He doesn't need any of those, so these can stop right here. And we'll just put this guy here. He doesn't need them, though. He needs them. So we can stop him here. Now, he's going to be getting these explosive cannon shells, and then all he needs after that is the radars. Radars need iron, iron gears, and electronic circuits. There's iron, there's iron gears, and there's electronic circuits. Doesn't matter which one we take it from. I've been trying to, to not take it off of this one because he, if this guy ever, if, if these three ever get loose or get down, this guy's going to go dead first because I, I keep uh, feeding him into the other ones, although I, I'm not sure how much I do it. But anyway, that's, that's the big idea. So this guy here can't be where I remove the... circuits from and these guys are all going to come down on the bottom so I can actually take them right from here we're gonna go like this you're gonna go under you're gonna go under in red though but I've got this thing right here what am I doing yeah we'll do it here then so you are under you are under and then we're gonna take here and here so I actually want to bring you guys out one more there we go do I have this right now everybody's reversed correctly yes okay so now you can come this way and wiggle your way around and then uh, just come out here and then this is where the iron is going to meet the uh, gears. And the gears can come down this line right here. This line right here. Which of course is one off from where it should be. So I think I'm going to I think I'm going to cheat and use a red belt right here. Even though, even though I only need, it's why I'm calling it cheating, it's not really cheating, it's just different than what you would expect. Uh, but uh, I'm using a red underground to stretch a distance that uh, it needs to stretch. Even though it's only really supposed to be a, uh, a yellow underground, is what I'm doing. And let my robots do the rest. And then uh, these guys are going to fill up this guy with what he needs. He's going to start making uh, radars, which is the last thing we need. And then this guy is going to start making artillery shells. And we finally have those. So let's go ahead and throw a... Uh, we're using buffer chests at the end of the line here. Of course, it's not in a logistic network. So you know what? I'm going to just put a regular steel chest in there so we don't get complaints from the game about not putting things in a logistic network. Now, one thing about artillery shells that you'll see in a moment here, this is one of the more unique things in the game, is that artillery shells uh, don't stack very well. Uh, so I'm actually going to say uh, this is that the whole thing about the red star is uh, greater than... It's enabled when it's less than, we'll say, 40. Oops, not 710. <laughs> Not 701 either. 40, there we go. And the reason I set it to 40 is you notice how these things are stacking. That's right. There is one per stack. And there's a reason for that, and that's because artillery shells are expensive. <laughs> they're 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 a high-end product, and uh, moving them around is supposed to be hard. Um, so anyway, I need to uh, I need to in order to show this, I need to actually make an artillery gun as well. And I'm just going to make one in my hand because I'm not going to make a lot of these. Uh, this is something that, that you can put in all your outposts 
to um, to stop biters from expanding towards them. And uh, when an, when a biter base expands nearby your outpost, the artillery gun will shoot it and kill it, and that'll be the end of the, the end of the line, which is awesome. Um, however, it's not something that you that you often uh, that are going to deal with in this situation that I'm in right now, which is that. Uh, we don't have expansion on. We we don't. We're not. We're not actually seeing the biters come in, and uh, uh, encroach on our territory. So I'm just going to make a single artillery shell, and notice that there's also. Uh, let me find it here. I think it's actually in the train section. There's an artillery train wagon, which, in addition to that, it uh, it allows you to drive around a train with artillery shells on it. Um, which I'm going to build as well. So we need 64 engine units. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come down here and build this. Let's just go ahead and find engines on the belt. I'm standing on the belt with engines on it. They're not being made very quickly. Oh, but there's these here. Okay, that should be enough to make a single artillery wagon, which is really all I need. Then I'm gonna come back down here to where we're making our artillery shells. I'm going to plop another uh, steel chest down here just to get rid of some junk. Let's actually turn on our logistics again to get stuff in our trash first. Um, just don't want anything that, I, uh, that I'm that i not actually actively using uh, a lot of. Oops, I, I should probably keep those. Um, that should be fine. And then I'll just grab six artillery shells, which each up six inventory slots, which is crazy. But anyway, what you can do here is uh, you, you can, you know, somehow get these artillery shells out to one of your remote bases. And then there you're going to have an artillery cannon, which I'm just going to put here. And uh, you can have them in a box and then you can do that. And then this guy will put an artillery shell in here. And, and if he had anywhere to shoot, he would now be going to shoot that that thing. So I'm actually going to let's see where the nearest. And if you see here, if, let's turn off uh, pollution, so you can see um, artillery shell range. This is the range of this turret. So if I, even if I put it here, like the range here is you know that far, right? So if I put it here, the range of this guy is only going to be this far, um, which means that none of my outposts are within biter range because I've gone out actively cleared the biters away because my pollution is actually wider than my range. However, the biters can still encroach upon you that way. But that's the automatic range of these guys. That That's the range that they'll auto fire at bad guys. The range where they will fire, where you can tell them to fire at bad guys is a bit bigger than that. And if I go into here and I build one of these auto turret, um, auto targeting remotes, which needs a single radar and a single processing unit. So I can, I can take a radar out of here. I'll just take two. Why not? And then come in here, come over here and grab some processing units, which we should have at least in slight excess now because we're not making, uh, we're not making, uh, these circuits. Anymore. Yeah. I, I, I cut off, uh, I cut off making, um, modules and look now we're, we're we're backed up on everything so anyway so i can make one of these targeting and you only ever need to make one unless you lose yours somehow but now that i've made this targeting thing here i can go in here and now this now that i'm holding the targeting thing this is the range of that artillery turret now that i'm auto targeting and note he can actually reach these guys so i can actually tell him to shoot these guys one thing about that if I do do that, he's going, the, the, all the biters here are going to get mad and run at the artillery cannon, which is right here. And they're just going to, they're going to make a beeline and they're going to attack the first thing they find on their way, which is actually the artillery cannon. So I need to protect the artillery cannon <laughs> in order to uh, have it not die. So what I'm going to do here is I've got gun turrets. I don't think I'm making laser turrets, which is a little annoying. Maybe I can maybe I can actually just make some a whole uh, really quick here. Uh, laser turrets take steel batteries, and electronic circuits, none of which do I actually have on my person. Uh, so let's turn logistics off. Let's check out what we have here. Steel. What did I say these things need? Steel batteries and uh, electronic circuits. So let's let's take the electronic circuits out. I don't have any batteries. 
I need more steel as well. Uh, here's the steel. Batteries are somewhere. I think they're a little bit farther down here. Here's my batteries. And now I should be able to make uh, six laser turrets. Sweet. Yeah, you always want to protect your uh, your investment here because uh, I guess I guess I didn't need that steel chest. Um, he he holds five uh, artillery shells as well, and this guy's still he's still making uh, more. He's waiting for these explosives, which take a while to make. It's just the way it works. I could throw a uh, yellow guy on here and throw some uh, speed modules in him just to make him run a little bit faster, just so so he he runs faster than this guy does. But uh, let's see, we've already got a laser turret. So let's go ahead and put that there. We're going to want a power thing here. And then we're just going to put some laser turrets around like this. That should be good. That should be fine. And then my robots will, will build these laser turrets as we go. So let's have some fun now. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get our targeting device here. Let's go into map mode. And let's... Uh, let's and you can actually hear the biters, which is funny. Now, you want to target. You can't... Oh, th that's kind of convenient. Um, your, my ra your radars, I think I've mentioned this before, your radars sort of scan in a... Not necessarily in a circle, but they, they, they reveal sections of the map. Oh, yeah. So we can now see what these guys look like here. Um, now, it's important to note that this little red line, if I, if I hit like this, he's going to hit this base. If I go like this, he's actually going to hit both of those bases. So you want to kind of aim it so that you hit as many bases as possible. I think I can do this in three shots. So I'm going to go one, two, and three. And then if you look here, this guy, he's turning. He's going to fire his shell. And then you can see the shell going across the map, and you can see it also revealing. That's why you put a radar in this thing. And it reveals the sections, and then, boom, I just blew up three of his things. And then it's going to hit there. I blew up those two. It's going to hit here. And then, boom, all of those bases are gone. However, the biters have gone over here to team up, and they're going to start running at me. And eventually, they're going to come into uh, radar range here, and we're going to actually see them coming. And I should probably... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step off to the side here, because I would, I would like them to deal with it. But I would also like to make sure I'm going to be okay. I have a single personal laser defense, which is probably enough. But I'll run down here and see if we can see them coming. I predict they're going to they're going to cross right. Yeah, there they are. See, they're 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 coming up there. They're sort of going slow. But but these are this was all the biters in that base that uh, that that could have possibly. Um, that could have possibly come in. Now they're getting they're getting stuck up on the trees. They're sort of re reconfiguring themselves. But then they're they're going right for the thing, and then my lasers just take them out, and boom, we just took care of that base. So I didn't have to even leave my my thing. Now, there's worms still there, but who cares about worms, right? Because the worms are uh the worms are 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 inconsequential. They like unless we're gonna expand there ourselves, they don't they're not gonna make biters, they're not gonna attack us based on pollution, etc. things like that. Um so that though means that, that this uh this artillery turret is completely useless now for me. Now for, for a regular game, these get these bases could still expand north and eventually this artillery thing would be useful. However in this game in particular they're not expanding so I don't need it. So I'm actually gonna pick this thing up. I'm actually gonna control X and cut. And of course, turn on my logistics <laughs> and get rid of some of this junk in my in my inventory so that the so my uh, uh, we'll get rid of these beacons too. Uh, so my bots can put uh, good things like important actual important things in my inventory. That should be good enough. Uh, and I'll leave this uh, this guy here. And I'll pick up as many of these as I can. Oh, it looks like looks like there's more shells here. It's, yeah, carrying artillery shells can be a pain in the butt. That's why the artillery wagon is actually a, a good idea. Now, do I have an engine? I do. Okay. Um, what else can I put in my logistics slots here? I probably don't need all of these rail signals, and I probably don't need all of these yellow belts. So then we can pick up these and these. Now there's no more shells left on the ground. So what I'm going to do now is show you the uh, the rail 
wagon. And I'm going to actually head, let's head up to the main line here. This line is separate from everybody else, so I don't want to put my, I don't want to put my rail wagon on this line. I want to put my rail wagon, actually this line's fine over here. So we're going to put, uh, we'll put you there. And then we're going to put the artillery wagon on the train, wherever it is. There it is. And you see, that's a that's a wagon that actually has... Um, uh, I'm not sure where that robot... what that robot did, but... Oh, well, I'm not, not too concerned. <laughs> um, this artillery wagon, it has one slot. He can hold all of those shells that I, that I just had in my inventory. So you could actually carry more shells on an artillery wagon than you can in a lot of places. So anyway, I'm going to drive my train here. And uh, what I can do here is I can, I can set a, a station for him and say, like, just go to, uh, go to this copper mine one. Oh, I have to be in the trains menu. I always forget that. I have to click on the train and then say, go to copper mine one. Oh, and then I have to tell him actually, yeah, go go to it. I added it as a station. So so he's heading down there, and you see if we look on the map, he's got his turret range, his own personal little turret range. But then if I pick up this uh, targeter, I see I much have a much bigger turret range. Now of course these bases are actually outside of that range. I can I can oh there's no I thought I could place a place a marker there, but but I can't even do that. So this this artillery turret can't even target them. And I don't think he can target anybody, which is kind of sad because I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to show that off. <laughs> but, uh, but oh well. Um, so let's go ahead and I'll tell you what, I'm actually going to write lay some specific rail lines just to show this off. So I'll be back in a second. All right, I've uh, run my train line down here. I'm, I'm a lot closer now. So when I pick up this thing, these guys are well within range. So what I want to do here is, um, sadly, I, I just realized I need to do a little bit more work because uh, I need power. Luckily, we're not too far. Oh, and we actually at one point had a laser turret there that uh, <laughs> the, uh, the 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 ghost hadn't vanished yet, which is amusing. But anyway, we're not too far from the, the main base's power lines, uh, and they even have some laser turrets out here. So I'm just going to uh, I'm going to run some power lines down because we need to we need to run the laser turrets that would uh, that would. Oh, boy, I hate getting stuck on there. We go. I'll just run down on the. Let a robot take care of that, and that one. There, and then we'll do one more right here. And uh, this is where I'll put my, this is where I'll put my, uh, my laser turrets. And we'll just put four of them around it. That should be enough. Probably. So anyway, so so what you would do here is instead of all this rigmarole, you would you would have a uh, a station, right? You would have a station like these that's specifically set up for the for the artillery turret to visit and sit there for a second to see if it shoots anything, and then it just leaves. And then that station would have some laser turrets around it like this, which I may as well uh, may as well double up our our abilities here to to defend our, our our place. And it looks like that that laser turret can't get made, but who cares? Um, but then. Uh, this guy would, um, he would come here and he would be able to see these, these bases himself, uh, but he can't. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and target them like we did the other ones. And let's, let's see how many of these we can kill with, with each shot. looks like that should, that should do it. And he's turning just like before. And then he shoots and he, and he turns to shoot at the next one. And he's spitting out, he's spitting out shell, which shells, which is awesome. And, uh, yeah, it looks like we, looks like we successfully took out the base. The biter bases themselves took out those. Looks like we might need to target right here. No, actually, I was fine. Then these guys are going to get targeted, and then these guys are going to get targeted. And uh, now the biters are actually on their way. We don't see them anymore because, uh, well, we we see these guys coming, but as soon as these things fade, all we're seeing is where we last saw biters. Um, and then we could also take out these worms if you wanted to, and that would also give us a little bit of. Uh, a little bit of a view of what's coming. See, here they are. We, we could actually, we, we saw them, <laughs> we saw the biters coming as we, as we shoot the, the missiles. And so here they come. And see, yeah, they're, they're preparing, and then my laser turrets just take them out. And then these guys are a little bit bigger, but they're coming. It's a bigger group.
But our laser turrets are so strong that they don't even have a chance. This, this one lone uh, spitter just walks up and boom, he's dead. And then that's it. We, we've taken these guys out. Now, that they still show up on the map, sadly, because uh, the map only draws what you saw the last time it was scanned. But uh, they're taken out, and they're fine, and our artillery turret did a great job. It's a great way to get rid of things. Um, the other great way to get rid of things is one more awesome weapon. Um, not as good as it probably could be. Uh, not as good, in my opinion, as the um, artillery turret, to be honest. Um, but it has a better name, and I may not have researched it yet, actually. Uh, no, I have not, actually. The atomic bomb. I actually need. Uh, I need the rocket stuff for the atomic for the atomic bomb. So I guess. I guess I maybe I'll talk about the atomic bomb next episode, because um, I have one more thing I want to talk about this episode. And uh, let me let me reverse. Oh, I, I, of course I can't. Uh, I can't reverse him so I will uh, I'll just reverse the train manually I don't want to pick it up because it's got all the artillery shells in it but uh, we're gonna go up and we're gonna make one little quick change to our um, to our power up here so I guess I'll want to come here oh there's no dest there's no path to that destination that's amusing well let's we can come to here that's fine we can we can drive all the way around there and while we're doing that uh, oh, wow, he backed up a long way. <laughs> that's pretty funny, but he can do a turnaround here. I could have easily backed into another train. That, that's pretty funny. Um, but anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's go ahead and build us a switch. And switches are in all this stuff. Power switches need iron plates, copper, and electronic circuits, which shouldn't really be that hard to, uh, to build uh, out of raw materials here. I'll just hop out of him. And actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete this temporary station and I'm going to send him all um, back here because nobody ever wants to go there. So when, like, I don't care where this guy goes, I don't want him anymore in, in the game ever again. So uh, let's go ahead and pick up some of this copper off this belt. Let's pick up some of this iron off of this belt. And then let's make ourselves a power switch, which is right here. Yeah, five iron plate, copper cable, electronic circuits. Doesn't really matter. We'll just make it. And then let me head up to the power station here. And I had previously set up my power, if you recall, to turn off the belt when this guy um, is out of electric charge. Um, or when he has electric charge, I should say. And his electric charge is full. And you can also tell that by looking at the, uh, the power pole here that A is equal to 100. And what I did is I set this guy up so that, that if A drops below 99... Then he turns on and that'll send fuel down here in order to uh, let these boilers fill up with fuel. We're going to change that now. We're actually going to turn this off and we're going to let these boilers fill up with fuel. And what we're going to do instead is we're going to we're going to eliminate all power connections. To um, oh, apparently that's funny. They were only getting their power from this. So. I'll have to connect these guys over here to the main uh, station here. There we go. Now these guys have power. They're getting their power from the base anywhere. Now they're not getting their power from the um, from the power station here. So, uh, and then I'm gonna I'm actually gonna delete this line and put it here. So the only connection this entire power station has to the rest of the network is this line right here. And now I'm gonna eliminate that. <laughs> and you can eliminate that by taking a uh, copper wire and clicking two power poles that are connected via copper wire, and it will delete that copper wire. So now these guys aren't connected to anybody at all. You see that. So now I'm going to take my power switch that I just made. Uh, where is it? There it is. Power switch. Looks really cool. You can, you can tell instantly what it is, that it's not connected. Uh, I'm going to need another, another copper cable. So let me, uh, let me just take this copper cable, put it here, and let's go ahead and make some more copper cable. I want to connect my power here, and then I want to, uh, actually, let's drop it, and then pick it back up, and then connect it here to here. So now, these guys would be connected if this switch was connected. So now we're going to connect our green wire to this switch. And then we can say when A is less than 99, this switch should be connected. 
That way, now we have an instantaneous connection power. Now, these guys are still running right now. Um, which is kind of odd. They shouldn't be, yeah. I don't know what they're powering. They're not powering anything. Oh, they're powering a single radar. Where is that single radar? It's right here. Okay, we definitely don't want that single radar to be powered by them. We'll bring the we'll bring that radar up here and delete him from down here. Now these guys aren't running at all because they don't have anything to power. But they're perfectly primed and ready. They've got they've got steam, they've got fuel, they've got everything ready. As soon as we drop below any power over here, this thing will connect. And I can show you that by changing the the if statement and say if it's greater than 99. Now, see the, the thing connected and they are running. And that's that's it. And I actually, I think there's a new graphic for this that I, I haven't installed yet. <laughs> uh, but if we go back to less than, it disconnects and now these guys go idle. And that's a, that's a nicer way to do it because before I had to wait for the coal to go down and get loaded into these guys, in order to start generating power. Now the entire force of this of this power station will turn on the moment we start running out of power in this guy, which is a super powerful way to do it. And that's it. That's all I got to show you for today. Um, next time we're going to do uh, the rocket and we're going to do an atomic bomb. <laughs> we're going to blow up a biter base with an atomic bomb. I hope you're looking forward to that. If I, As I said earlier, if I've missed anything that you want me to talk about and, and is, isn't one of those topics, that has to do with the rocket or the atomic bomb uh, or I guess uranium ammo, which I totally forgot about this time, but th that's more up close and personal. So I'll do that next time too. Uh, but if you, if you want to hear about any of those topics, mention it in the comments here because I'm not going to be talking about anything else after this. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed watching this. I definitely enjoyed playing it. I'm superfluous J and I will as always talk at you later.